Alright. Heaven of Code. Day 9. Uh oh. Uh. Come on. Seriously. That is super annoying. Uh, so what are we gonna do? Oh, I need to, like, trace it. Mm. Still not right? Got it. Down, left, and right. Strictly lower, huh? Ugh, terrible. Uh... Hmm. Can isn't this ambiguous?
I see. It's like separated by nines or something. I made this mistake. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good part two. Terrible part one. Uh. So what's going on here? What even happened in part one? I don't even remember. Got the plus one. What's the other thing I forgot? Oh, I. Yeah, I got confused about whether it meant strictly. Lower, okay. So we had this big grid of numbers. And then in part one, we were supposed to find all the numbers. This is supposed to be the easy part. We were supposed to find all the numbers that were strictly lower. So I missed strictly. Uh, lower than all the numbers around them. And sum them up, plus one. And I also missed the plus one. Those are my two bugs. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this should be. You go through all the numbers, and then you check all four directions. And if the neighbor in that direction is in the grid, uh, and the neighbor is less than or equal to it, then it doesn't count. And if it does count, uh, then you add that thing plus one. That's part one. Uh, and then in part two, we wanted the size of the three largest basins, uh, which I found the definition of a basin to be slightly ambiguous because I think uh, it could be the case that you could have, so like my interpretation eventually was that the basins are bounded by nines. Um, but it seems to me that you could have multiple low points bounded by nines, right? Like, what if the whole thing is just like zero, one, zero? Like, these are both low points. What is the one flow? What is the size of this basin? I don't know. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't think this problem was super clear. Uh, but apparently it's just supposed to be true that the things bounded by nines will only have one low point or something. So anyway. What I interpreted this question as is like, divide the grid into sections uh, where like nines are walls and everything else is, you know, you can free to move in that, multiply together the size of the three biggest sections. And apparently that was the right interpretation, but I still think it's a little bit ambiguous. Okay, so anyway, assuming that is the right interpretation, what do you do? Um, so basically we want to go through all the squares. It's basically like a breadth first search, a BFS in each region. It's like flood fill each region, the computed size. 
Uh, so for each square, if we haven't seen it in a region yet, and it's not a nine, then like flood fill this region. So the region size starts at zero, uh, and we keep a queue of the squares on the boundary of the flood fill, the boundary of the BFS, starting with this cell. And then uh, while we have still have squares to process in this region, grab a square. If we've already been there, uh, do nothing. Um, mark that we've seen it, uh, increase the size of the region by one, right? Mark that it counts towards the size of the region, and then go through its four neighbors. If they're in the grid and they're not nines, then they're part of the region, so add them to the queue. And once we've gone through everything in the region, we've computed a size, so add that to the list of sizes, sort the sizes, and then for now, you know, multiply together the three biggest sizes. Uh, so that's part two, which, you know, let's move through part one. Um, yeah, so I guess it's worth, uh, BFS comes up a lot in admin codes, maybe worth talking about. Um, I have this pretty structured way of doing it. Uh, so I like to define the four cardinal directions. Uh, so we have the four directions which are up, uh, right, down, and left. And these are in the clockwise order, which is occasionally useful, although not for this problem. Um, so, uh, you know, rows start at zero, zero. So zero, zero is at the top left and then columns are to the right and rows are down. So up is minus one row, uh, right is plus one column, down is plus one row, and left is minus one column. Um, so it's a good coordinate system for grids, I think. Uh, R is the number of rows, C is the number of columns. So like check if a point, right, so to like go through the neighbors, you go through the four directions, uh, you add, you know, DR and DC to your current row to get your new square, uh, this is how you check if something's in the grid, right? If the rows are zero to r minus one, or zero to you know greater than or equal to zero, less than r. Same thing with the columns, greater than or equal to zero, less than c. Um, so that's like, is this square in the grid? Uh, yeah. So that's sort of the general thing that I do for grids, and then uh, for BFS, uh, keep track of like where you've been and then keep track of the, sort of the current frontier. Uh, so then grab the square from the frontier. If you've already seen it, continue. Um, otherwise, uh, mark that you've seen it, and then go through the neighbors, right? And this is exactly the same neighbor formula from before. Add DR and DC, check if it's in the grid. Uh, and then you can add that to the queue. So this is you know, the general formula for BFS. You can start somewhere, uh, and then you keep popping off things that you haven't seen, and then you go through your neighbors and you add them to the queue. Um, yeah, and in this case, we're using it to compute the component sizes, and we want the three largest component sizes, so easy enough. Sort them. Uh, so that's it for day nine. See you tomorrow.